Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a pair of rainbow bouquet cards to share with you as part of the Strength and Kindness Hop. This hop is celebrating my friend Maria reaching 100 subscribers on her YouTube channel. I think that you will be really excited to see all of the videos in the hop today. There are some great prizes. If you're unfamiliar with Maria's channel, you'll definitely want to check it out. She asked us all to um, think about what our card making superpower is. And that was kind of uh, kind of tricky for me. I wasn't quite sure what it would be. Um, I do enjoy making interactive cards. I make those quite often, but I like other cards too. And one thing that seems to just stick out to me the most when I was looking through some of my cards recently is that I tend to put die cuts on top. And I love the dimension that you get from from adding dies. So I decided to just make a big die cut card. <laughs> um, and actually I ended up with so many flowers that I cut out, I, I decided to make two. Um, so what I'm showing you here are the different sets that I used. I just grabbed um, some of my iCrafter sets. I've got a, a couple that I used for the uh, sentiments, the love and the happy birthday. Um, I've got a stamp set that I'll use for the inside. And then I just pulled out other die sets that had small floral pieces in there. Um, I, I am going to make two top folding note cards. So I went ahead and I die cut a smaller little matted piece um, of polka dot paper. And then I also cut out the envelope from the animal lope set. And I used some of the flowers in there too. That I had pulled it out for the flowers and I decided to add an envelope too. So I'm going to show you real quick um, how I kind of put the flowers together. When I was die cutting the pieces, um, the dies are awesome because each die, um, each, each flower has the main flower and then it has a little accent piece, like the flower center or petals, that kind of thing. Some of them have three, like uh, stamens and another petal. Um, and some of them are only single layer flowers. So what I did was I went through and I cut out a couple pairs of each and I used both a light and a darker shade for each color and I just went through my scraps and pulled out a couple shades of red, orange, yellow, green, the whole the whole nine yards. Um, and I think I have probably three or four colors of greens for the different leaves. But I want to show you the assembly is fast and easy. If you were only going to cut out one color cardstock, you could just cut out the lighter color and then use a marker to darken up the accent piece. Um, and in this case, I, I did cut out some gold glitter pieces as well for the flower centers and stamens just to get a, a little pop of shimmer in there. Um, and sometimes when I cut out dyes like this, I cut them all from white paper and then color them myself. I do enjoy doing that. It's kind of like um, no line coloring, except you have hard lines because you have a physical die cut piece. <laughs> so you can't really mess them up. Um, so so die cutting is my card making superpower. <laughs> so that's what we're going with today. Um, and I have to apologize now. My hair, I had it up in a bun and it's going to make an appearance quite a few times. I didn't realize it. And I apologize now. Um, so let's fast forward a little bit here. My sentiments are all glued together except for the happy birthday. This is a trick I picked up from Mindy Egan um, and I'll link to her video because it's such a neat idea and I don't know why I never thought of it before, um, but I'm so glad she showed me. Uh, so what you do is you layer the shadow piece um, that's cut from vellum with your scrap pieces. I, I cut two scrap pieces from white cardstock and then a gold glitter piece. So I've got the shadow, a piece of white cardstock, the gold glitter on top, and then now I'm going to come in with another piece of scrap paper and I'm going to glue it to the back side of the vellum. And what that's going to do is elevate the, the shadow piece, the vellum piece, from the card. So it's not going to sit flat on the card itself. You'll have a little bit of dimension or a little bit of space between the two. And it's a really cool effect. It, it doesn't really show up on the camera very well, but in person, it really makes the vellum piece pop. So thank you, Mindy, for that. It's a great idea. Okay, with my flower pieces and sentiments done, let's assemble the envelope. Uh, this envelope is in the Animalope set, and it's a two-part uh, die 
because mostly because it, it just wouldn't fit through most standard six inch cutters um, but the added benefit is that you could cut the top piece from a different colored cardstock or a different pattern paper if you wanted to which is awesome um, when you cut it out it has the fold lines already scored in there so i just kind of scored on those lines and now i'm going to glue the top flap on backwards from where you would normally do it normally you put the flap on the inside of the envelope but in this case i'm going to put the flap on the outside you see it's kind of ugly you would see the seam if you closed it up um but since i'm intending to have it only open you'll never be able to fold it up um, it doesn't matter so that's why i did it in the opposite direction here then i went ahead and i sorted my flowers into two piles and notice that for one pile i have three of the red flowers and only one in the other and then uh, like three daisies in the other and only one in this one i wanted to not have all even numbers. I didn't want two of each flower. I wanted some two, some three, some ones, um, or singles, just so that you have different, like odd and even numbers in there. It's not all the same. Um, and then I'm just gonna sort of roughly lay out where I want the pieces. And it's pretty quick to do. And I have more flowers than I'll actually end up using, but you can see I just kind of roughed them out. Then I'm going to use my tweezers and some PVA glue and just go ahead and start gluing them in place. Now, if you were um, happy with the placement exactly where it was, you could use a piece of press and seal. That's Jennifer McGuire's technique where you use press and seal, pick up all of the pieces as one, then just add glue to the back and glue them down. But this, like I said, was roughed in. I, I wasn't exactly sure where they were all going to end up and I wanted to be able to work with them a little bit but I, I knew that they'd roughly be in that area so I glued them down individually and it did not take that long um, once I got them in place I wanted to glue down the happy birthday I did bring in my card base for that remember I've already trimmed down that panel um, and I want to kind of figure out where happy birthday goes as a whole or as looking at the card as a whole rather than just looking at the polka dot piece. Um, and I did get a little bit of glue on the vellum. So uh, sorry again for my hair. <laughs> um, but if I hadn't um, brought in the card base there, I may have moved happy birthday more to the left and, and not have been so happy with the placement. So that's why I brought the card base in there. And now before I glue it to the card base, I want to bring in a piece of fun foam. And I used red here. Uh, I like the pop of color that you get if you see it from the side. And I use wet glue. Again, that's PVA glue. It works great for fun foam. I don't waste as much of my foam tape. Um, and again, I, I do like that little bit of color that you get if you look at it from the side. And then I can go ahead and glue it to my card base. It will be elevated. And I didn't bring in any gems or sequins or anything because the gold, the little pieces that I put on the centers of some of those flowers and then on the, the uh, sentiment, it, it really was enough shimmer and glitz as it was. So I didn't need to bring in any others. I did consider it, but they just kind of got lost and you, you just couldn't see it. So I'll set a block on that one to dry and then I can work on the envelope and again, I'm just going to kind of rough them in and then glue the flowers and leaves in place. Once I have those all glued down, I'm going to seal up the envelope. Um, I just put a, a line of glue along the bottom of the inside of the envelope there. If you wanted to tuck something else in, you could. If you do leave it open, then you'll want... Um, at least a piece of green down at the bottom or something so that it doesn't look like the flowers just start at the, the fold line there. Um, but I didn't need to waste any flowers inside because I didn't want to put anything else in that envelope. So I glued it shut. And then I'll grab some more of that fun foam um, just to put on the back of the envelope here. Um, I should mention the pattern paper that I'm using is opaque enough. Um, you do not see any of the red through. Uh, especially you wouldn't see it on the envelope piece, but on the other card that we already made, um, it, it doesn't show through. So that is something to keep in mind if you're going to use colorful foam underneath. 
And then I'll just go ahead and glue the envelope to the card base. And then I'll glue love on there. And that's stacked up, I think, three or four times. I do like an elevated sen uh, sentiment. It's pretty. And then I wanted to just bring in a couple more little pieces on the outside of the card base just to fill in some of the empty space. Uh, so I grabbed one more little gold dot and then another flower and leaf and glued those down. And then I can weigh that down. Now to finish the cards, I just wanted to put my sentiment inside. It says, wishing you happy thoughts. And I already lined it up in my Misty. Um, because the, the front of the card is pretty thick with the foam and all of the layers, I lined it up so that the fold um, of the top part of the card is outside of the Misty completely. Uh, so it won't get caught up on anything. And then I stamped it with VersaFine Claire. I was thinking I would emboss it, but then I decided I didn't actually want to emboss it because I didn't want to risk warping the paper. So I just uh, let it air dry. This ink does stay wet a little longer. Um, so just be careful of that. You wouldn't want to close the card and transfer the ink to the, the other side. That pretty much finishes up these cards. And I want to remind you that today's video is part of the Strength and Kindness Hop. There are lots of great designers, some fun prizes, so make sure you hop along with us and leave comments. And again, check out Maria's channel. She shares some really fun card making videos, and I'm really glad I found her. By the time this video airs, I think she'll probably be up to 200 subscribers, so way to go, Maria. If you're new to my channel, feel free to click subscribe, come back for more videos after you hop along with us. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you liked today's video. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.